So today we're going to be looking at and installing KubeVirt, but first let's take a look at some of the benefits. So you're going to be able to run virtual machines side by side with containers. Uh, virtual machines operate inside of a container, so LibVirt's running inside a container and the virtual machine is running there. Virtual machine uses the same underlying resources as the container, so networking, storage, and registry are all the same. It enables better interoperability between VMs and containers, and it allows for desired state configuration based on VM management. So if you look at the right here, here is a overview of the architecture. So you've got bare metal with Kubernetes and KubeVirt running on top of it. And you can have app pods with a container and app pods with KVM plus Kimu VM containers. All right, let's get KubeVirt installed. So what do we need to get started? We need a couple of nodes. I've already added three nodes, three virtual machines. Let's go ahead and set up the cluster. So add cluster bare OS virtual machines is what we're going to use. We're going to use a single master cluster. So let's name it KubeVirt. Let's go ahead and select the latest version of Kubernetes. We're going to use Metal LB so we could use load balancers on our virtual machines. And we're going to enable KubeVirt. Uh, we're going to set up an IP address range for Metal LB. This is just so we can use uh, load balancers when we're creating services. All right, we're going to select our master node. We're going to select our two worker nodes. And we're going to finish and review. And that's it. We're going to hit complete and the clusters are gonna to start deploying. Now it's gonna take a few minutes, but once it's done, we can just download our kube config and go ahead and get started working with kubevert. All right, our cluster has been deployed. Let's go ahead and download the kube config so we can start interacting with it. And then I've got a script that just copies my kube config over into .kube slash config. So you can get pods. All right, nothing in there. So now we go ahead and move on to the next step, which is going to be setting up virtual machines. All right, let's go ahead and deploy a virtual machine and a load balancer service in front of it. So let's start out by going to virtual machines. And you can create one via the UI. If you hit new virtual machine, you can select the cluster, the namespace, and the virtual machine type, and then paste in your YAML file. But what we're going to do is create it via the CLI. All right, so we're going to start by creating a virtual machine instance. It's going to be Ubuntu. We're going to name it demo VMI and label it demo VMI so that our load balancer service is able to find it. Then we've got some user data down here where we're setting a password. We're setting up our SSH keys. We're updating all of the packages, then upgrading them. And then we're installing Kimu guest agent and Apache 2. And then we're also making sure that Kimu guest agent starts. So let's go ahead and create the virtual machine. And then let's create the service. So the service is a load balancer and it has ports for SSH and HTTP. So we're mapping 22 to 22 and 80 to 80. And then we're use, using the selector for demo VMI and then to type load balancer. All right, so the virtual machine is gonna take a couple of minutes to get ready. Cloud and it's gonna run, it's gonna make it to the user data. It's gonna do apt to get update, apt to get upgrade. And then it's going to install our packages for us and then inject the SSH key into SSH authorized keys. But what we can do is go ahead and take a look at the UI. And we can see the virtual machine is running. It's not finished yet because we don't see guest OS, which is what Kimu guest agent is going to show us. We can go ahead and go into workloads and we can find it in default. And we'll have to refresh. All right, there's our virtual machine. And then what we can do is find the service. If we go to namespaces default and then refresh. All right, and that's just our virtual machine instance and our load balancer service running alongside other uh, pods and services within Kubernetes. So we can go back to the virtual machine and we can see that it still doesn't have the guest OS, which means it's still running cloud init. We can go to the command line Make this a little bit bigger so you can see. We can open up the console for demo VMI. And we can see that CloudInit's running still. All right, CloudInit is finished running. Let's go ahead and exit out. Take a look at the UI. All right, cool. Everything's running. We see our guest OS information from the Kimu guest agent. Let's find the IP address. All right, 
Let's go ahead and SSH to it to begin with. All right, we're in. Let's check that Apache's working. All right, it's working. Awesome. Looks like everything's working. So what we can do is exit out of here. Clear. We can go back and we can, with the UI, delete the virtual machine. Let's go ahead and delete it. And then let's delete the service. Service is gone. Virtual machine's gonna take a minute to finish out. There we go. It's gone and we've cleaned everything up. Success. So that's a quick overview on how to set up and install Kubert on Platform 9 Manage Kubernetes free tier. We went in, we deployed a cluster, we deployed a virtual machine, we deployed a service, and then we were able to SH into it if you have any questions or you'd like to learn more, you can go to platform9.com and join our Slack group. Just scroll to the bottom and select Platform 9 Kate Slack group. And you can join and ask questions, provide feedback, or let us know uh, what you're working on.